Have you ever played Pokemon and thought, how can I make this children's video game more difficult? Wait, wait, what's that? No? Um, uh... Oh. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you- Well, if you're anything like me, which by the way, I hope you're not, that would totally suck. I don't wish that upon anyone. You have may thought about it, and rightfully so, with there being an entire community out there making Pokemon more difficult, taking it to the next level. There's randomizers where every Pokemon you encounter is completely random! Everything down to the Pokemon you start with could be anything. You never know if Youngster Joey is gonna show off his high percentage rat- Oh, oh my god, what the f is that? There are also Nuzlocks where Fire Emblem meets Pokemon and if you have any of your Pokemon faint in battle, even once, they die. And if Ash Ketchum has taught me anything, it's to value friendship. So I cannot participate in that cruelty, my man! But one day, I came across a beautiful idea. Browsing YouTube, right there, dab in the middle of the homepage, BAM! And what was it? It was the Wobbuffet Challenge, made by my man, Ma Dry Bread. Huh. Make sure to check his video out, by the way. Well, he tried to beat all of Pokemon Emerald with only one Pokemon, Wobbuffet, without using items in battle, and it got me thinking. Why not be inspired and try my own Pokemon challenge, you know, not this because of the view, the, the view is pretty high, yeah, you know. Thus, the Abra challenge was made. Wait, I know what you're thinking. Abra evolves into one of the strongest Gen 1 Pokemon. Pfft, I said Abra, didn't I? That's right, I'm not evolving this bad boy. He's perfect, just the way he is. And if you didn't know, Abra only learns one move on its own, and that's right, Teleport, a move that deals no damage and only lets you flee from wild Pokemon encounters and outside of battle lets you return to the last Pokemon Center you visit. And let me tell you boy, I'm gonna be doing that a lot! The challenge rules will go something like this. I will start Pokemon Fire Red with Abra. Using the Pokemon Starter Program, I can start with any Pokemon in Fire Red, so I'll replace Bulbasaur with Abra. I only use Abra in battle. No items in battle. This wouldn't make it very fun, I could use X-Special and other items that would just make it completely easy. No evolving. He is perfect just the way he is. And I don't care what anyone says, Abra boy for the win! I will have to catch other Pokemon for HMs only, but I will not use them in battle. And now that we have all the rules set, let's just jump right into this. Struggling to struggle. So after naming our hero of this adventure and our rival, who is named after a good buddy of mine who basically laughed in my face when I said I would do this and said I wouldn't pull his challenge off, we walk into the grass of course, triggering Professor Oak to bring us out to his lab and spew out some massive text bubbles. We are finally able to choose our starter Pokemon and of course who do we choose? The magician's useless magic words, the single Pokemon who can instant transmission anywhere, anytime, making it one of the hardest Pokemon to capture? And we get completely obliterated by our rival. Abra and his teleport are no match for our non-believer rivals, Charmander. Without having a move to hit back his Charmander, I was forced to spam teleport and effectively do nothing until he took us out. But don't count subscribe out yet! We may have lost this battle, but I swear to this day, we are going to become Pokemon champions together without the help of anything. Maybe rare candies we find on the way, but that's beside the point. After that humiliating loss, the grind be continued. The grind be, continu be continues. It, it never began, but now be continues. The grind begins! We finally set off to the grass. Abra uses teleport to teleport from every single Pokemon encounter we hit. And they ain't touching us, we gone. But after using teleport 20 times in 20 different encounters, we seem to have ran out of PP. The power points of teleport are gone. And what is that? What are we gonna do next? Oh my god! Abra just took a Pokemon out! Oh! Using all of our PP on teleport has granted Abra the ability to use struggle. I'm not making this up, seriously. With struggle, Abra will hit Pokemon out of desperation while damaging itself in the process, granting us our first strategy of winning. 
Although this method does work to take out Pokemon, it is not perfect due to us taking damage every single time we use the move. But that's not even the best part. The best part is, every time we go to the Pokemon Center to heal Abra, we'll also restore our power points. And that's right, we'll have to waste all our teleports again just to grind up levels, which we need a lot of because of Abra's extremely low attack stat that Struggle does. So, we'll be doing this for a long time. The grind never stops, boy. After a long, tedious grind of balancing teleports, struggles, and visiting the Pokemon Center, we are finally ready to rematch our rival. But this time, I made sure I was prepared and wasted all teleport PP before the battle. Hey, listen, subscribe. Sometimes you just gotta run away from all your battles until you can't escape anymore. And then, when your back's against the wall, that's when you find your true strength. That's when you dig in deep and you show them what you got. He absolutely destroyed us again. But hey, we're not out of this yet. We made a promise. So we grinded up again and we made our way to Viridian Forest this time to take on some more experience point worthy opponents. After the struggle of struggling, we battled a lot, and I mean a lot of caterpillar based Pokemon and mouses. Whether it was a bug catcher or a random encounter, just to prove how long I grinded, I ended up encountering a shiny Weedle, with the odds of that happening being roughly 1 in 8,000. That's a lot of damage. I, I mean battles. No shiny Pokemon gets left behind, so we caught it. It's not going to be used, it's just a trophy in the PC for now, but it's cool nonetheless. And if you do like shiny Pokemon by any chance, I have a massive compilation of shiny Pokemon catches and encounters in Let's Go. Tick the top right if you're interested. So after roughly 5-7 to seven hours of grinding and taking out all the bug catchers in Viridian Forest, we head back for the rematch of a century, and we finally beat him. Yeah, that's right, believe it! You may have a more well-rounded team and a reliable way to deal damage, but me and Subscribe will work 9 times harder just to defeat you. You should also check out this shiny Weedle. Pretty, pretty cool, eh? Okay, it's time to take on our first gym battle, Brock, the Rock-type gym leader. Rock-type Pokemon have high defensive stats in which Struggle will do to significantly less damage on them, regardless of me being a higher level. Struggle is a physical-type move, and our Abra is a special attacker, by the way, so we are have a really hard chance dealing damage. That's not a lot of damage. After attempting the first trainer five times and losing all my money, we finally beat him. Psych! I ain't gonna let you get the chance. I guess beating him and having Abra faint at the same time doesn't count in winning. After a few more attempts and gaining levels from attempting, we finally did it. Yay, the first trainer. Not even the gym leader. Honestly, I don't even want to take on Brock at this point, but after healing and draining all of our teleports, I'm ready. Let's do this. And we get bodied. Yet again. And after some extremely lucky crits on his Geodude, and even one on his Onyx in the same run, it finally goes down and me and Subscribe have struggled our way to our first gym badge. Funny enough, due to this battle being so difficult and all my grinding, I didn't run into a single battle worth talking about for a while. Basically, I one hit every Pokemon all the way to Mount Moon. I did have to go to the Pokemon Center to heal Abra very often due to the damage racking up from Struggle, but other than that, it was a complete walk in the park. I made sure to battle every possible trainer for max experience. After hitting the Pokemon Center before Mount Moon, of course, wasting all my teleports yet again, it was time to explore the cave where we would make a playthrough changing experience. While beating the trainers and returning to the Pokemon Center and wasting teleports, I found this area in the cave where a Team Rocket member was guarding an item. I took out the Team Rocket member and the item contained TM, Thief, which happened to be one of the very few TMs Abra can learn. Like I said, Abra cannot learn any moves naturally, but with TMs can make this a lot less time consuming. Now, with our brand new move, we are ready to take life by the Pokeballs. Until we ran out of PP again. Thief only had 10 PP, meaning I'm left with wasting all of my teleports before doing trainer battles or doing one of the two trainer battles until all of our thieves are pretty much consumed. I end up just using Thief and planning out my visits to the Pokemon Center a lot more frequent to save time from wasting teleport. Thief hits like a truck compared to Struggle, and even more, it's a dark type move and has a good spread on most Pokemon in the game. We defeat our first encounter with Team Rocket with ease and claim our Dome Fossil. That's right, we ain't no Helix boy here. 
We finally make it out of Mount Moon and we are on to Cerulean City. We encountered a certain non-believer yet again. Well now it's time to show him our training, and boy did we ever, to hitting most of his Pokemon. And he had the audacity to send out that Pokemon? A little inspired from what you've seen in our previous battle I see, Pat. But stands no chance against the original Abra, one hit knocking him out. Starting to regret what you said now? I then went on to clear Nugget Bridge and all the trainers leading up to Bill, all while managing Thief PP and Pokemon Center visits. It's finally time for our second gym battle. After one hitting all of the gym trainers, it's time to take on Misty. Wait, this reminds me of something. But even Misty wasn't much of a challenge compared to Brock, with Thief being super effective on her star me and two hitting her star you. We had our second badge after only two failed attempts this time. Oh, and it's only going uphill from here. Although it is very time consuming maintaining PP on Thief and healing at the Pokemon Center, it is far better than the struggle that was struggle. Now that we beat Misty, we can finally access an area where we can do another extremely important goal in the playthrough, and that's to catch a Pokemon with Pickup. Pickup is the ability to get random items outside of battle while walking with your Pokemon. In Fire Red, we will be using Meowth. I will eventually catch 5 to increase the odds of picking up better Pokemon items, but for right now, we are just going to catch one Meowth and name him Y. No, like seriously, why? Now that we have Meowth, it's time to go back to our gym badge journey. After clearing out all the trainers on our way, with ease, we head to the SS Anne and prepare for our rival battle, who happens to take us out because of my bad management of PP and Thief, but we return and sweep his entire team, and wow, what is that thing? Kadabra. How dare you evolve Abra? We one hit that Kadabra with Thief. See buddy, even if someone thinks they are more evolved than you, it's all about how strong you are at the core, before you evolve. And having a super effective move definitely helps. Just a little, just a little bit. After rubbing this old guy's back and beating almost everyone on his boat, we get cut. Finishing the puzzle in Lieutenant Surge's gym took me longer than it actually took for me to beat him and all of the trainers in there. But we'll have our fourth gym badge regardless. We're back on our journey and I cleared off all the trainers that I could find and went through Diglett Cave. But on the way I did run out of Thief and Diglets have the ability Arena Trap so I couldn't escape even with Teleport so I had to walk all the way back twice. On the other side, I saw this kid who wanted to trade an Abra for a Mr. Mine. Are you crazy? Abra is the best Pokemon ever. No chancey kid, I made a promise to be a champion with subscribe here. Also, I think it's worth mentioning my thumb is permanently indented from pressing B from level 16 to now every time Abra levels up so he doesn't evolve, but it is worth it, believe me. Next up is the Rock Tunnel, where I refuse to use Flash to go through, just as I did every single time playing this generation from 5 year olds till now. After blindly walking through this cave like a boss, multiple times because of running out of PP and beating so many trainers, I finally made it to the other side to Lavender Town, where I battled my rival yet again and sweeped his entire team, although it was a lot closer. All the ghost Pokemon here were very weak to my dark move thief, so it was a piece of cake until I needed the Silph Co stuff. So I headed towards Erica, the grass gym leader's town. Side note, I did make sure to go back and catch four more Meowths prior to this so that we could get the TM Hidden Power for subscribe. Hidden Power is a move that is different depending on what Pokemon is using it. For example, our subscribe got a fighting type move. Honestly, it's not that great of a move, but it uh, will save us from going to the Pokemon Center as frequently, giving us more power points. In Celadon City's game corner, Team Rocket had it taken over, but this isn't really worth mentioning, every single one of their Pokemon got one hit. Hidden Power was a great help though, because I didn't have to go to the Pokemon Center as often. In the Celadon City department store though, however, I did pick up the move Secret Power, not to be confused with Hidden Power, cause you know your boy got Hidden and Secret Power, which will add another move that Abra can do damage with. It's really not the greatest move, it just kinda does different effects depending on where it's used, but it is a move nonetheless and I'll take it a million times over struggle. Now we are ready to take on the fourth gym battle, which turned out to be a complete sweep. We head towards the fifth one now after cleaning out what was the remainder of Lavender Town. It's also pretty sad that all of those jacked up bully bikers had no single chance against one Abra. Abra just took you out, boy! Time for another gym sweep. 
Psych! I knew this gym wouldn't be a walk in the park when I lost to one of the gym trainers. I beat all the trainers and got destroyed by Koga eventually, so I went on to defeat more trainers and I got the surf from the safari, and I, when I came back, it was a huge battle, but Subscribe did end up paralyzing his wheezing and taking the victory royale. It's kind of funny to think I spent more time training to beat Brock than I did the next four gym leaders. So. I just throwing that out there. Sometimes the struggle seems bad out there, guys, but you just make it past that first hurdle and then life's easy. I don't know why I think I'm Gandhi or something. After getting lost in Seafoam Cave, I just walk all the way back to Pallet Town and surf towards the gym that way. And that will bring us towards our sixth gym, which is locked. So we do a thing and it's open. Seriously, this gym is supposed to be a quiz, but really you just battle trainers. Some quiz you got here, boy. Everyone gets sweet until I get to Blaine, which wasn't that bad until his Arcanine hit me with a Fire Blast and oh my god, that's a lot of damage! Abra is a bit of a glass cannon, so when I get hit, I get hit hard. That's why a lot of these trainer battles end up in me one-hitting their Pokemon, because I can't afford to take even a single hit. Even with going back and defeating every single trainer I had missed leading up to this battle, I was still not high enough to take out the Arcanine. So it was time to come up with a new game plan. The new game plan involved me teaching Abra Double Team, getting rid of our famous Teleport. No more struggle! The struggle is no longer real! With the move Double Team, I can afford to evade more moves. I would do the Double Team on his Growlithe because his Growlithe did very little damage on me. I made sure to get a perfect run where the Growlithe happened to miss every single time, leading up to Arcanine. And then when I finally made it to Arcanine, Arcanine used Roar, making all my stat booths disappear. If I was smart, I would have boxed all my Pokemon when it came to this battle, but I was really set on picking up more items such as rare candies with my Meowths while I was doing this. But instead, I just battled him 10 million more times until I got really lucky and Roar missed, and I took his team out just barely with barely any health. Six badges down, two to go. So we get the tea for the guards to go to Saffron City, and let me say, I forgot this was even a thing. I had to check because I thought my game was legitimately broken because I had water, lemonade, and soda, and they wouldn't take it regardless of them being thirsty, but no, they want tea! Okay, back in the day, they drank water! When we get to Saffron, we get to the most game-changing move, Psychic. From this guy who claims we already knew what it is, and like honestly he's not wrong, I had to double check that it was still here, and it's still here. Now with Abra's best potential move, and finally a special attacking move, we can sweep all of the fighting type gym, and the leader, and get a Hitmonlee. That's not the gym dude. Look right there on the front of the building, it says gym, I think they're trying okay. So what do you know, we have to battle Team Rocket again in order to get to the 7th gym. And what do you know, I also one hit every single one of them, especially with Psychic now, Giovanni had no chance. Oh, there was a rival battle there by the way, that was uh, somewhat close, but not really. The rare candy count is all the way up to 9 at this point, with picking them up and just finding them in the regular playthrough. Judging by how things are going, we might not even need them, but I will save them for when leveling gets extremely tedious. Now that Team Rocket is gone, we can take on Sabrina in the 7th gym and we easily destroy her with Thief being super effective and I also gave Abra the held item Dark Glasses to boost his Dark type damage with Thief. It's time for the last gym which is finally open and we sweep all of the trainers with our over leveled psychic attacks until the last gym leader, Giovanni, the man who runs Team Rocket who we actually sweep all of his Pokemon. I gotta face it, Abra is just a really high level now, and Psychic is just a really good move for once, so it feels good. Now it's finally time to face the final testament, the Elite Four in Victory Road. On our way, our rival challenges us in the same spot we lost so many times to at the beginning, but it won't be the same this time. Okay, I lied, we lose, but how? did I know Charizard would survive a Psychic. With Charizard surviving a Psychic means that he actually got to land a move on me for once and Abra takes a lot of damage. So I do end up taking him to his last Pokemon who is Alakazam of all Pokemon and somehow he ends up outspeeding me regardless of me being 30 levels higher than him. 
GG's non-believer Pat, but I'm coming back for you this time. And we easily defeat him on our second try. I think I got a crit or just a lucky roll on the, the Psychic on his Charizard, and we sweep his team, no problem, second chance, take that! Now with our rival out of our way, it's time for the real challenge, sweeping all of Victory Road. I mean the Elite Four maze, okay, no, the actual Elite Four. And at this point, I was so sure with how everything was turning out that this was gonna be a breeze. Not even exaggerating, I attempted Lord Lee 40 plus times and I've gained so much levels but I was losing so much money at the same time. I ended up spending all my money so she couldn't take it. I continued to power, power level off of her Pokemon that I could beat but a few runs and I would actually get a crit on her Lapras and sweep her entire team afterwards. The Elite Four members afterwards were actually not even a single threat. The first one being Bruno, the fighting type, was extremely easy. Psychic had a full sweep on his team. And next was Agatha, the ghost type trainer. I couldn't have made this any easier for myself. Psychic and Thief were super effective on all of her Pokemon, but I did run out of PP making myself lose, unfortunately. Although I was extremely lucky to get that point, it gave me an extreme boost in motivation knowing that Laura Lee was my most important match, and the rest afterwards were mostly a breeze. I continued to power level off Laura Lee's Pokemon, making it all the way to level 91, and I still wasn't one-hitting Laura Lee's Pokemon. One-hitting Laura Lee's Pokemon was a major factor of not getting hit it was time for the secret weapon! Rare candied up! I saved them all for this moment and now it's time. After spamming B to stop Abra for evolving for 84 times, he's finally max level and it's time to defeat the Elite Four. And Laura Lee still beats me at level 100. How can't I one hit Lapras still? I'm level 100 at this point and it's my best possible move. Come on, at one point I get lucky and I make it through to her last Pokemon Jinx and Jinx puts me to sleep and then makes me fall in love with it. How? I'm asleep. I've never fallen asleep and then woken up in love with a pocket monster woman I'm trying to kill. It doesn't make any sense. After many times just trying my best without changing the strategy at all, Iron Jesus was on my side and I finally defeated Laura Lee. I defeated the next two trainers like nothing, even more so now that I'm max level, and it was time for Lance for the first time. I made sure to restore my Psychic for this battle, and to my surprise, only two of his Pokemon survived Psychic, and I barely scraped by. Before the final, final battle, I made sure to heal Abra outside of battle and prepared for the final battle. This entire journey was pending on me become a champion with only one Pokemon. Every one of his Pokemon go down to a Psychic, except for Alakazam of course who I hit with a Thief. His Gyarados also survives with like 5-ish HP, and his last Pokemon, Executor, resists Psychic. I go for Psychic regardless taking my chances, and he lives, but he fails to quite take me out. In the second Psychic, ends it all. It ending all doubt in not only myself that this was possible, but also my rivals. He saw firsthand what perseverance, struggle, and friendship could really overcome. So we did it. We became the Pokemon champion. Just me and subscribe. Like I promised. What's next for us? Only time will tell. Nah, second thought. Now that I did it, I think it's time for make a sweet trade for that Mr. Mime that that kid had. Damn, look at this guy. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And also, thank you if you made it all the way this far. This video was pretty long. So shout outs to you guys. I wouldn't have came up with this idea without my dry bread, so do make sure you check out his challenge videos. They are just as epic, if not more epic. He's doing some crazy stuff with Dragon Ball right now, Dragon Ball and Pokemon. Make sure to check them out. But if you do like challenges, you should check out my 100% playthrough of Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green, where I even end up printing the certificate. I bet you didn't even know that was a thing. My name's R9Beats. Thank you guys for watching.